Hey, it's Allison from Computers.Mom here to show you how to scan on a Mac. One quick note before we dive in. This video is for Macs running Mac OS 13, also known as Ventura, or later. If you're running an older operating system, we have a different video for that linked above. If you're not sure, just click the Apple on the upper left hand corner of your screen. On the Apple menu, choose the first option about this Mac. If the window that pops up is wide like this, you're running an older operating system, but if the window is tall and skinny, you're in the right place. It's easy to use your printer to turn a pile of paper documents, photos, receipts, into nice neat digital files on your computer just as long as your printer has a built-in scanner. You may have a basic flatbed type that will scan a single page at a time or an automatic document feeder that can handle many pages, but the process is basically the same. Don't worry about taking notes as we walk through the steps because you'll find a handy one-page summary at the end of this video. Let's start by loading the item we want to scan. On a flatbed scanner like this, you'll place the page face down on the glass. Don't worry about which direction it faces, but do look for the markings along the edge because they tell you which corner of the glass you want to be closest to. In this case, that's the upper left corner. If you're using an automatic document feeder, place the pages face up on the little chute here and tap them all the way in. At this point, many people will press the scan button on the printer. Don't! You'll have much more control if you manage the scan from your computer. Here's how. On your Mac, open System Settings, formerly called System Preferences. If you have it in the dock, you can open it there, or you can always find it on the Apple menu as well. On the left side of the System Setting window, scroll down to Printers and Scanners and select it. Let's move in a little closer. On the right side of this window, you'll see a list of all the printers and scanners that have ever been connected to this computer, just one in this case. The red dot and the word offline tells us that this printer is not ready, usually because it's turned off. I'm going to go turn it on, and after a minute or two, you'll see the red dot turn green. We're ready to go. When I click on this printer, a new window opens. If your printer has scanning capabilities like this one, you'll see the Open Scanner button over here. Click on that, the scanner window opens, and you should hear the noise of your scanner warming up. Notice also that the printer has appeared on the right side of the dock between the two skinny vertical bars. If you drag it over to the main part of the dock, it'll be easier to get to next time. In the scanner window, look for the Show Details button and click it if it's available. Let's zoom in farther. If you see Hide Details instead of Show Details, then you're already in the right place. On the left side of this window is a preview of the scanned item. It's upside down, but we'll fix that in a moment. On the right is a long list of options, but don't worry, they're pretty easy once you understand them, and normally you won't need to make many changes here. The exact options vary depending on your model, but let's take a look at some typical ones. Starting from the top, scan mode means where is the document you're scanning. It's either on the scanner glass, choose flatbed, or on the automatic document feeder and choose that. Second, kind. The options here will vary by printer, but usually there's something like text, black and white, grayscale, color. Note that even if your printer doesn't print in color, you can still scan in color. The simplest and fastest option is text or black and white. Grayscale or color will take a bit longer to scan and the resulting file will be a lot bigger. If you're not sure what's the best choice, try scanning with different settings and see which gives you the best result. Resolution means how many dots per inch will be created in your scan. More means better image quality, but also a bigger file. 300 dots per inch is usually good enough for everyday purposes. Next, the size. This setting has a funny little quirk that trips people up all the time. See how custom size is checked and the size is set to zero by zero? If you don't change these, the resulting scan will be zero size. It won't exist. So make sure the size you choose matches whatever you're scanning, usually US letter. That helps avoid this common problem where you scan a photo and you end up with a tiny scan on a mostly blank page. Once you select a size, a dashed line appears on the preview showing you the area that will be included in the scan. If it's not quite right, just drag the outline to where it belongs. 
Remember when we put the document on the flatbed and I said not to worry about which way was up? That's because you can set the up direction using the orientation buttons right here. If the preview is upside down or sideways, just click the matching head and the file that's created will be saved in the correct orientation. The next two options determine where the digital file we are creating will be saved and what it will be called. I like to save scans to the desktop so they're easy to find. We can leave the file name scan or type a different name in that box if you want. The last setting we're going to look at is an important one, the format. Although you often have a long list of options here, most of the time you're only going to use JPEG for images or PDF for documents. Since we're scanning a document, let's choose PDF. Note that when we switch the format from JPEG to PDF, we get two additional checkboxes. If you're scanning a five-page document, checking Combine into a single document means that all five pages will be saved into a single file rather than five separate ones. And OCR, Optical Character Recognition, will try to save the text in your scan document in a readable format, not just a picture, so that the resulting file can be searched or edited. This last option in particular isn't available with every scanner. We're going to skip image correction, which is not that useful, and once all the options are set the way you want them, click the Scan button to get things moving. Your scanner growls again while it scans, and when it's finished, we can close the scanner window and zoom out to find our document right on the desktop as we specified. Open it up if you want to check it looks okay, and it's right side up. You're done. Next time you want to scan, if you've added the printer to the dock, you can open it and just click this button to open the scanner window. Very easy. So it's a lot of little steps, but none of them are difficult. As promised, here's a quick recap of the process on a single page. Open System Settings either from the dock or the Apple menu. In the System Settings window, open Printers and Scanners. Select your printer and make sure it's ready to go. Click Open Scanner. In the Scanner window, choose the appropriate options for your scan, the format, size, location, name, and so on. If you don't see all the options, click the Show Details button. And finally, click Scan to create your file. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please click like if you found this helpful. We invite you to post comments and questions below, and don't forget to subscribe for more Computers.mom videos.